everyone, we're back, and as you might realize, my hair is a bit different. Well, time passes. We we're still talking about capillarity. So back to our first slide. Do you remember when, how we should interpret water table fluctua fluctuations after the concepts we just learned? So that's the idea. We've seen the, the concepts and now we have to think about how we're going to use those effects. Actually, the, those effects are quite interesting, but not that obvious when we're thinking about the use in a real field situation. Well, first thing is, when the water table rises, when the water table raises, water, the wetting phase, displaces free phase, non-wetting phase, upwards. Yes, we're talking here about a dinapple. So, when the water table moves upwards, we have here, can you see here? We have din L apple here. So as the water table rises, sorry, as the water table raises, it brings the L apple with it. But the water here and the L apple here, we have a contact, an immiscible contact. This is the point. Not only we have uh, water here in the L apple here, but we also have the porous medium that makes all the difference. Porous medium is what makes a difference. That's why we hydrogeologists and uh, has reservoir engineers and people like that use that information because the, the porous medium makes a difference. So again, as the water table is rising, right, as it's, it's going up, it tends as a uh, wetting fluid to follow the smaller pores first, as we mentioned, right? So water goes upwards and it displaces the free phase. Well, when the water table uh, lowers, right, the water table lowers, free phase dis uh, displaces the water or more generally speaking non wetting phase displaces the wetting phase okay so we have two different movements here we have wetting phase displacing the non wetting phase and here we have non wetting phase displacing the wetting phase well when we we're thinking about that situation things are a bit interesting look at that here is that the situation where the water table is actually moving upwards right and it is actually look this is the the water clean water this is the residual zone the smeared zone where the the free phase has become uh, residual phase and here is the uh, L-NAPO itself okay so as the water table ra uh, raises we have a process that's called imbibition the process is called imbibition when the wetting phase displaces the non-wetting phase on the other hand when the water table is moving downwards right so what happens is that the free phase is actually this the his name is non-wetting phase the free phase in this case is displacing the wetting phase and that new situation is called drainage so drainage and imbibition tells us these names they tell us where the water is moving if is being displaced displaced by the non-wetting phase or if it's displacing the uh, non-wetting phase if the wetting phase displaces the non-wetting phase non-wetting phase imbibition if the non-wetting phase displaces the wetting phase in it's called drainage okay well 
we'll, we'll come then to the simplest pore structure that we have. And I'll have to make here some explanations for you again. So we'll make sure you, you know what's going on. When you're talking about that pore doublet, we we'll have to think about the, the simplest structure that we have. Think about a capillary tube here. I have a capillary tube. Can you see that? I see the capillary tube here. Well, a typical capillary tube is a linear tube. But in that situation, we have a special tube, not a single capillary tube. We have a capillary tube that splits in two. It splits in two and has one way upward and one way downward. Two ways, you see? It has two ways. Okay, so the water comes here. The, okay, yeah, put the finger in behind. You don't see it. Well, when the water comes here, it has a possibility of moving to this direction or to this direction. And it's the same for the wetting fluid as it is for the non-wetting fluid. And we're going to, to study and try to understand what happens in the simplest pore structure. Why? Because it, it, it's going to tell us exactly how the phenomenon occurs. This phenomenon of capillarity is very important and it, and it defines how free phase and residual phase behave. So, please pay attention. In this simplest pore structure, as we have here, I can show you, we have here one dark fluid and we have a clear fluid or white fluid here filling all the pores okay so I have one one actually one capillary size tubing that splits in two and then merges again here so here and here if you pay a close look to this guy, pay good attention, you will realize that the upper portion is slight, slightly smaller than the lower portion of the tubing. Okay? Take a look. Again, you can compare to the size of the circle that I'm using. Look. Again, it's smaller. So, when I'm talking, I'm talking about something that's smaller, you, ha you have to remember that we're talking about the capillary forces. And capillary forces are um, inversely proportional to the size or to the radius of the tubing. Well, if it is um, inversely proportional, the smaller the tubing, the larger the capillary force, right? The larger the tube, the smaller the capillary force. Okay, back to our to our pore doublet then. Well, as you learned already, if you take a look at this meniscus here, look, or this one here, you may say with total total safety that this guy here, the dark fluid, is the non-wetting fluid and the white fluid is the wetting fluid. Why? Because the fluids are such that the fluid that is on the concave side, right, concave side is always the wetting fluid. No, sorry, the fluid that is on the Concave side is always the non-wetting fluid, and the fluid that's on the convex side is the wetting fluid. So we take a look back. This guy here, the black, is on the concave side. So it is called the non-wetting fluid, and the white guy is the wetting fluid. Well, we use the meniscus because meniscus usually is simpler to understand or to, to visualize than using the, the, the angle here. I could draw an angle and see that the sm smaller than 90 degrees angle here uh, is in this guy in the water here, the, this guy, 
in this in this situation has the higher density by definition and we will have uh, concluded that this white is the wetting fluid as well but the meniscus will do the same job for us uh, on a more uh, straightforward way okay again so now we will see that as the fluid is moving it'll have it'll have to take a decision to which pore is going to go let's see then well we will have uh, a porous a pore doublet here for you and you may take a close look and you see there is a red thing here all blue and there is a red thing here okay well this red by the meniscus we may comfortably say that this guy here is wetting fluid and the blue is going to be the non-wetting fluid right well then by uh, imbibition is when the non the wetting fluid displaces the non-wetting fluid let's take a look wetting fluid is displacing look it's moving and you'll have to pick one side oops first on the top oh now at the bottom why what's going on again sure look at that it stops a little bit here it slows the movement a lot and then it moves ahead it keeps going keeps going until it touches here touch down oops faster at the top portion then slower at the bottom portion they coalesce and they move together okay I'm, I'm gonna explain that to you and then repeat again I know you like to see that over and over again okay when this fluid the red fluid or the wetting fluid is invading here when it reaches this point here you see on the movie that what happens here here you have one radius right and as it comes here the radius of the meniscus increases well since this fluid wants to invade it's acting as uh, creating a capillary force to displace the non-wetting fluid but as the capillary force gets weaker why because the radius got bigger as the radius increased the capillary force decreased so it moves slower to reach this point here at the moment that the new large meniscus touches this guy here oops sorry sorry at the, at the moment this meniscus touches this guy here it actually flows faster through the top portion why because the radius here is larger sorry is smaller and the, the smaller pores favors the movement of the wetting fluid uh, you see that as this is moving the larger radius here gets to a halt it stops here it doesn't move any anymore until a given point where this meniscus here gets larger large to a point that it gets even larger than this one here and this starts to flow because it, it always picks the smaller pore first so it moves to this side and then it coalesces and goes to this direction okay that's the explanation uh, I'll have to I'm just moving back the slide because I, I click it wrong wrongly again take a look at the movie large pore or ra large radius smaller capillary force 
very large radius, very small capillary force. It touches, follows here. And now this guy moves because this radius gets larger than this one here. They coalesce and go together. Once again, now I'll shut up. Okay, you guys can go back and forth as many times as you wish. Why? Because you can take a look at the movie, please. You have this, this good resource of the video. You can flip back a bit, see how it moves, and then understand all that. This is a very, very good little movie that makes you understand why the fluids follow that path by just uh, attend, uh, attending the Young's equation, okay? That's very, very obvious now that you have the information. Okay, now we go to the drainage. And again, you may see that we have a little blue fluid sneaking in here, okay? Well, this fluid now is going to displace the wetting fluid. It's a drainage. It's a non-wetting wetting, displacing wetting fluid. Well, but if, it, if the blue fluid is the non-wetting, it, it, it is likely flow, or it has to, it has to flow through the larger pore. Let's see how it goes, and then we talk. Whoops. Uh oh again that's a bit weird isn't it oops uh oh yeah it is weird isn't it this guy stayed behind so we left wetting fluid behind this is called irreducible water don't call this residual phase because residual we we tend to save this terminology for non-wetting fluids okay that gives us a, a, an idea of a contaminant source when you talk about residual phase so this is irreducible water let's do that again And the question is, why it stays here and here? Look, answer is going to be again on the size of the pore. Well, you have to, to assume that for the non-wetting phase to drain the wetting phase, right, you have to have an external force that pushes it to the pore, right? Just like when you have the water table lowering. So we have gravity brings it, brings, bringing the, the free phase down. Okay, well, as it enters here, you have a meniscus and the meniscus gets larger. And as you know, the capillary pressure is acting to, from right to left it's against the movement well as the meniscus get larger the capillary force gets weaker right and then well to a point that it's easier for this fluid to invade and then it touches here when it touches here again it's going to split into a small radius here into a larger radius here and as capillary forces act in that direction, from right to left here, from right to left here, this guy will suffer, this blue fluid, the non-wetting fluid, is going to suffer a much higher pressure against its movement on the top portion. 
So it's easier to move through the, through the bottom portion. And it goes through the bottom portion. As it reaches here, differently than what we had there, the radius is still big. And it keeps bigger and bigger and it leaves this guy behind. It just snaps off from the continuity that we have uh, for this wetting fluid and it leaves the irreducible water behind. Let's see that again. Larger pour, bigger look. Meniscus never gets smaller here, so this would move. It's always bigger, and it leaves this behind. Again, this is very important, and it is very important that you take a close look. Take a look at the, at the movie I showed you, and see how that works. You have to see that over and over again. I know. Some movies are much more fun, uh, fun than that. But good intellectual understanding gives you pleasure as well. So take a close look and you understand what happened. In our next class, we're going to make this even more complex. And then you have more fun. Take care.